we always hear that alcohol uh, that can be used in, uh, in, in small quantities. That's how it is being promoted by some of the doctors, including doctors. So what is the safe level of alcohol that can be taken by an individual? To cut the long story short, yeah. there is no safe level of alcohol that can be consumed. Sure. 100%. Okay. Because all the studies that were done on the benefits of alcohol mm. from early 1920s were based on flawed designs. Okay. For example, this particular biologist and statistician who did the first study mm -hmm. which showed that alcohol in low doses actually improved survival mm -hmm. actually got wrong. Okay. When further studies down the lane came over decades, mm -hmm. other researchers showed that it was not the low level of alcohol that was beneficial, it was a healthier lifestyle in the people who consumed low levels of alcohol that was more beneficial. Okay. So, for example, if you take out that healthier lifestyle and only take al low levels of alcohol and then look at the outcomes, it was all bad. Okay. So, when you put the healthier lifestyle back into low le levels of alcohol, then the outcomes actually were better. Okay. So, basically the flawed design study that was done decades before mm -hmm. actually was propagated as a myth okay. by the alcohol lobby and people who love alcohol mm -hmm. saying that you know, low levels of alcohol is actually good for your health. Mm -hmm. But further studies also showed that even with low levels of alcohol, mm -hmm. Your risk of uh, foot pipe cancer, esophageal cancer, your risk of mouth cancer, your risk of breast cancer, these all increases by 20 to 35 percent even with simple exposure. Okay. You don't have exposure. Single exposure. Okay. Because alcohol is one of the most important poisons in the world that can cause cancers. It's known as genotoxicity. It damages the DNA. Okay. And because of this, people at risk can develop cancers even with very low levels of alcohol. Furthermore, when you take alcohol, even with a single glass of wine every day. Mm. By the way, wine and beer are alcohol. They are not. Okay. There is nothing called as a, a safe alcohol and a bad alcohol. All alcohol is alcohol and bad. Okay. So even with single exposure of wine, single glass of wine a day, your brain volume will reduce in size. Mm -hmm. The power for your brain to make new memories will come down. Your uh, sperm quality in men, the sperm mm -hmm. quality, semen quality, all of this will reduce. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, obviously, in the long term, your liver also gets affected. Mm -hmm. So, alcohol is not just a problem to the liver, mm -hmm. it's a problem to the whole body, okay. which is why it is known as a systemic poison. Okay. But it is socially accepted systemic poison. Yeah. It is why people uh, keep consuming it and glorify it. Yeah. So, uh, with regarding to the alcohol consumption by females, we have seen such an increase in uh, these days. So, uh, how can that be related to this? So, females, when you look at gender wise, yeah. it's very interesting mm -hmm. because uh, females can develop the same severity of alcohol, liver disease or other problems with alcohol mm -hmm. even with lower doses. Okay. So, the, the way females uh, metabolize alcohol mm -hmm. is very different from the way males, males. metabolize alcohol. Okay. So, females have uh, a metabolism that uh, promotes faster injury, longer duration of injury mm. and lot of other complications and the biggest problem is breast cancer. Oh. Alcohol in females is one of the most well studied uh, pakka association mm -hmm. with breast cancer. Okay. And and, and uh, it, it's very uh, important to note, note that uh, even with very low levels of alcohol, females can develop liver injury mm -hmm. when you compare with males. Okay. Males require sometimes require higher amounts of alcohol for that kind of liver injury to happen, but females can develop it at a lower level. Okay, so when we uh, speak about all these, people come up with, I'm a responsible uh, drinker. Okay, so is there something called as a responsible drinking? I think uh, responsible drinking is a term, it's a consolation term basically, for which is brought up by people who want to do what is wrong, okay. even when shown what is right. So it's similar to saying responsible terrorism, okay. uh, responsible serial killing, okay. responsible you know whatever. destruction, whatever traffic violation. Exactly, <laughs> responsible traffic violation. Yeah. Because even even people who kill or people who who uh, uh, you know who uh, do uh, do terrorism or mm. people who are burglars, they all, they have, all have their own reasons, uh, reasons to do it. Yeah. But they, they, if they are doing it responsibly, well, what is the problem? Right. They have their reason, right? Yeah. So that is why we say there is no term called responsible drinking. Okay. It's actually a very wrong usage because since WHO mm -hmm. and based on the latest and one of the greatest studies that Lancet has brought out, 
has said that there is no safe level of alcohol. That's the latest study. That is the latest. There is a 2022 2023 study. Okay. Lot of uh, expert opinions have been written on it also. Okay. And the WHO has endorsed that study and said that there is no safe level of alcohol and it does not promote any health benefits, including heart benefits. Mm-hmm. So the World Heart Federation has actually put up a statement saying that even low volumes of alcohol can actually injure your heart. Okay. And it can increase the risk of stroke. it can increase lot of cancers mm-hmm. so all all that myth is now down the drain i mean the the whole benefits of alcohol myth is now gone okay uh, I, I, so that means there is nothing called as a responsible drinking friend and i i don't think people should ever use that word okay. so uh, when it comes to the doctors uh, these uh, patients or the the public when they need an answer for this uh, the first persons to be consulted for that answer would be the doctors so as you said uh even the doctors today are not aware of these new studies uh the two, 2022 studies and all so how can a, a, a common a lay person be aware of all these in despite having all this uh, information available on the pubmed how can one go there and search all this how is it how can be that made easy for them i don't first of all i don't think a layman should ever go to pubmed okay so the first and foremost point is that PubMed is not the journal. Mm. It is just a data repository. Even ResearchGate, people go there and yeah. see. ResearchGate is the, basically personal profiles only. Okay. It's not even a proper data repository. Just like Facebook. Just like Facebook. It's like okay. a Facebook for the scientists. Mm-hmm. But PubMed is actually a proper scientific repository. Yeah. I mean, a data repository of lot of studies. So that also includes lot of pseudo scientific studies. Yeah. For example, you can have an index journal from homeopathy. You yeah. can have index journals in Ayurveda, all in that. Yeah. so just because it is on pubmed doesn't mean that it is actually good okay you have to understand or learn how to interpret what mm. is a good study and what is not mm. and i don't think i mean forget the lay people i don't think even more than 80% of doctors actually know what so, to what, what is right and what is wrong on pubmed right and that takes years and years of uh, reading writing mm. and researching i mean only if you are into it you'll mm. understand from an academic perspective what is right and what is wrong on pubmed So just because it's on PubMed doesn't mean it is right. That is number one point. Sure. Number two is even if you know how to search PubMed and get the right articles out, you may not have the right uh, critical thinking to interpret that particular article mm-hmm. or that particular data. A lot of doctors also don't have it. That is why I specifically say that people who are not into medical research, mm-hmm. including doctors who practice medical science but are not into medical research, please don't interpret uh, face values of. Uh, papers that you see on PubMed as abstracts, okay. you have to read it in de- detail, understand its critique, understand its limitation, and then give out the right uh, uh, conclusions on it. Okay. And uh, lay people, I don't think, should ever go to PubMed and read any articles on it because they are not meant to do that. They are not trained to do that. And even I think the the newspapers, the media can uh, take a lead in this by publishing the latest information. We are still seeing the uh, the the old. Uh, reports regarding uh, the small quantities of alcohol is okay. I I I think I saw that article even a few days ago in some newspapers. They are still keep on telling that. Uh, I I think the whole aspect of Indian media as one of the biggest allies mm-hmm. of improving public health in India is gone. Yeah, it is gone. They they just want people to stick uh, on. Uh, yeah, yeah, go for clickbaits and people to stick on with that old world thinking where. they'll get more uh, you know engagement from the public so if some some media says or somebody says that you know alcohol is not good for you or it is harmful in any quantity uh, i i'm i'm sure that somebody who who's enjoying his alcohol will never read that paper again so they, that is the, that is the whole point of media media i don't think it's truthful in in most matters in healthcare at this moment but i hope if they change then i think we can definitely improve the public health Uh, thinking so i think uh, something uh, off the records like <laughs> this clearly shows that who is the real mafia <laughs> i mean th- this is how it is i mean there are a lot of mafia you yeah. have an alcohol lobby mafia you have a tobacco mafia you no, have they always say that this big pharma and all yeah, such things so definitely. if we are really into selling the medicines we should be hiding all this information exactly yeah. why should doctors yeah. even say i mean why should i say that yeah. please don't drink any amount of alcohol yeah. because the largest number of people i see are from alcoholic liver disease only Okay. So if if I want more patients, if my unit wants more business, my hospital wants more business, definitely I'll just keep quiet about it. Yeah. But I'm coming here and telling people to stop drinking, so that I don't want them as patients. Why don't we see such uh, many liver doctors coming up? Why don't we have such hepatologists all over the country? Um, I don't know. I mean, seriously, I don't know. But okay. but I I, I think 
uh, even as a hepatologist, yeah. uh, the depth of uh, uh, the depth of data that I see now mm -hmm. regarding various common beliefs that people have mm -hmm. and how that has changed over the years. Even I I found it out maybe in last two or three years only. Okay, that is because I was interested in doing it. I think every doctor, not just hepatologist, if they have a very clear focus on patient care mm -hmm. and public health perspective, it's not just that patient who sits in front of you is everything for you. No, that patient, the family around it, the community, the society, if they have a whole general attitude of improving public health altogether, mm -hmm. then I think those are the doctors who would actually would want to do more okay. beyond that patient that they see every day on the chair. A kind of social commitment. Exactly. Okay. Because it, it is written in the Indian Medical Ethics Code that a doctor's duty does not end with the patient that he sees. It goes far beyond the patient towards the society also. Okay. So in that sense, if some doctor says that, uh, you know, I mean, what one group of doctor who would just want to please the patient would say that, yeah, you can have a little bit of alcohol. Mm -hmm. But somebody who wants to take this message across uh, beyond that patient would definitely say that, no, you know, any amount of alcohol is not good for you. So it's like the, the science is evidence-based or the medicine is evidence-based, but the doctors are not. The doctors are eminence based. Eminence. They feel like they they can do whatever they feel like doing because they have been seniors or whatever for 10, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So whatever they have seen and uh, uh, or experienced is the real evidence. Okay. And a lot of doctors operate on that, okay. which is wrong. I think it's done with alcohol. Alcohol is done. It is okay. dusted. Okay. Yeah.